What up guys, it is just as and this video is going to review the Spellcaster gloves or the Dominion Tower gloves in general, but for this video specifically, I'm going to be using the Spellcaster gloves as the example to take you through different PVM scenarios, how to best obtain these gloves and the changes and updates that Jagex have recently made to them to make them extremely useful when PVMing and I can imagine even PKing. Before I start this video however, these gloves at the moment are extremely OP, essentially just to quickly wrap up what they do, they, they give like an accuracy boost at the moment it feels like when you're at Virago or any PVM fight, but you can now really hit hard, it's almost like having a tier 99 gloves or something, so there, there is like an accuracy boost currently on Dominion Tower gloves, potentially there are rumours, nothing confirmed yet that they are going to get patched, it may follow the typical buff cycle of any item on the game like Void, when it got buffed it then got nerfed and now it's got buffed again where Superior Elite Void is now worth using. But just to let you know guys, a lot of this video may be disregarded when that patch comes into play, but it's not in the patch yet. So for now, it may be worthwhile to follow these steps and get these gloves. Also my quick opinion on these gloves, um, before going into this video and delving into it and reviewing them, um, I do feel they should have some sort of accuracy boost because the time and effort it takes to go into it and again I'm going to go through the pros and cons throughout this video in depth, however they are slightly overpowered at the moment because you can literally always hit everything and uh, yeah that's my opinion anyway, I do feel though they should be up there with the best of gloves within the game. Two reasons why you might as well go for them anyway even if they may get patched, if they get nerfed I have a feeling they may only nerf them to an extent so they may still be really useful, they're different abilities which I'll go through and effects later on in this video. Secondly, it is also a comp cape requirement so any maxes out there who are going for comp anyway or any people who aren't max but potentially want to go comp for the future, you might as well follow these easy steps in order to get the gloves and obtain 500 boss kills at Dominion Tower. So in this video I'm going to take you through how to obtain the gloves, what quest requirements are needed, there are 25 boss kills in a row that are required, the best tactic to get these 25 kills quickly is through the endurance mode and the bad bosses you want to leave or restart on are the Dagonoth Mother version 1 um, or 2 but if you need to get the version 2 which is a requirement, a boss requirement for the gloves then definitely don't skip that and just actually kill it. Um, make sure you take a knock staff or sorry a magic setup, a range setup and a melee setup because when you get to the Dagonoth Mother version 2 you're going to need all of those different setups to actually kill it. Uh, another bosses you want to skip out are the Desert Treasure Treesum and Nomad. They're just annoying bosses that you don't really need to kill if you've already got the quest requirements, you've already killed the bosses before then you want to skip out those bad bosses and just get 25 kills quickly. You can just restart the endurance mode. It doesn't have to be 25 kills in a row, it's just 25 boss kills as a whole and then you'll be able to unlock one set of the Spellcaster gloves, Swift gloves or Goliaths, whatever uh, ones you've unlocked. And just a quick tip, if you've got Dagonoth Sentinels, as I do here, if you stand in between them, they cannot heal each other, you can wreck them to shreds. So let's delve right into what you guys want to hear, which is the changes to these Dominion Tower gloves. So, 5% uh, chance to deal up to 125% spell damage on basic abilities, the chance to reduce opponent's combat stats, this also... This also, guys, surprisingly works on bosses like Virago and Araxor. Finally, guys, some effects that actually work on high-level PVMing bosses. So Virago and Araxor, it, reduce, it can reduce um, their combat stats. Very, very useful for Phase 5 in Virago, I must say. And I'll probably be streaming some 4-man Virago later on for you guys. Potentially an epic PVM clip coming up soon. Not sure if this stacks with teammates, though, however. That may be too overpowered. So, for example, let's say if you're on Phase 5 Virago, you've got all 5 team members or 4 team members using Spell Class to Glove then maybe reducing the combat opponent uh, reducing the opponent's combat stats may be too OP if all that's stacking up and I'm pretty certain it isn't. I think only one of those um, spellcaster gloves effects actually works on the boss at that one um, time. However, the 5% chance to deal, to deal up to 125% spell damage is completely individual to that player and that works for every single player within that boss fight. This video is also going to go through the pros and cons right now and towards the end it's going to go through some comparisons against other, um, other gloves and bracelets within this set um, within this class setup. So at the moment I pretty sure Dominion Tower Gloves are the best in class depending on what scenario you are in. So to simply put it, the Dominion Tower Gloves now increase or have a chance to increase the base ability damage of whatever weapon you are using. 
What are the pros to actually having these? Well, they're completely free. It just takes a bit of time. Obviously, you've got to go through the quest requirements. For example, for Spellcaster Gloves, you've got to do Nomad's Requiem, Blood Runs Deep, Dream Mentor, Legends Quest, The Curse of Arif, My Arm's Big Adventure. So there's a few quests there, which also have a lot of pre-quests before them. So in terms of the requirements, it's usually a high level, uh, usually people who have got a lot of quest points who are probably going to be able to obtain these. Other people may not be able to obtain these, and you may have to work quite hard if you want to put it as a goal. So that's that can be a con in terms of the time it takes. It's very time consuming, but they are free, remember. Um, useful, very useful for high level PVM, which is very nice to have um, an item brought into the game or almost brought back and revived um, back into high level PVM. It's not been revived to work at lower levels, even though it's a tier um, 80 glove. It's not been worked to, it's not been reworked um, to fit into, let's say, Slayer or lower level monsters. It's been reworked for the high level PVMers out there. And also, let's move on to the cons, the quest requirements like I just went through. It lasts for four hours of combat. You have to protect it on death, otherwise it will degrade. Again, pretty commonality thing now. I think maybe a couple of years ago we may have been angry, or a year ago or so. We might have been extremely angry if it degraded upon death. However, nowadays we're all kind of used to it now in terms of the costs, which come with dying at PVM. Um, going into protecting on death, let's say my setup would be Tectonic and Amulet of Souls, typically uh, Spell Cluster Gloves now, and potentially a Scrimshaw. So there's different things there. There's definitely more than five items which I need to protect. So my thoughts are probably best just to lose the Amulet of Souls. You don't really want to lose your Noxious Staff, let's say if I'm using that as a weapon, uh, because if you lose your weapons upon death, sorry, not lose them, but if you don't save them in your grave, they degrade by 20%. The Amulet of Souls only degrades by 10%, and it only costs about 1.1 million for an Onyx Recharge, which recharges it by 50%. So overall, probably best if you use an Amulet of Souls, full Tectonic, um, Nox Staff or Dual Seismics, and a Scrimshaw, it's probably best just to lose your Amulet of Souls um, to be able to save your Spell Cluster Gloves. Um, because at the end of the day, four hours of combat is not that long. If you actually die without saving them in the grade, I'm pretty certain they disappear completely. Don't know whether this is a glitch. I think you get something like 17k GP for them. Let's have a look now at PVM comparisons and comparing it to different gear setups. So it's more DPS at the moment than wearing full Superior Elite Void. Very interesting fact that, isn't it? And I have only taken into consideration when wearing the Dominion Tower Gloves with Tier 90 Armor and Tier 80 Boots. Uh, they're better than Celestial Hand Wraps um, slash Death Touch Bracelet. Uh, the Death Touch, Death, Death Touch Bracelet, get my words, uh, words mixed up there, uh, are actually have the same bonuses as the Celestial Hand Wraps, just have a few hidden things. However, the Death Touch Bracelet obviously is good for hybriding, tribriding, because it has the bonuses across all of the different classes which are going melee, mage, and range. Um, the Goliath, Swift, and Spellcaster, you need each type um, best in class and you need to switch those across if you're hybriding or tribriding. So again, potentially a Death Touch Bracelet uh, combined with Tier 90 Armor Switches would be a better combination because you're not having to switch as much or just Superior Elite Void, to be honest. So if you're hybriding, tribriding still, probably best just to go for your Void. However, if you're going just for one single combat, let's say a Virago or Rax or the high level PVMing where you've got a team based maybe, then these are the way to go in terms of the Dominion Tower gloves. Um, also, Celestial Hand Wraps are easier to obtain, the tier 90 Magic Gloves and their comparisons are a lot easier to uh, obtain, just literally purchase them from the GE. Um, it's definitely an easier option than going for Superior Elite Void or for these Dominion Tower gloves. Um, but are Dominion Tower gloves too OP? Well. As it stands right now on the 9th of November 2014, yes, they probably are overpowered. However, I still feel they need to be very high up there with the rest of them and they need to compete. Um, at the end of the day, I think some of the cons really do balance it out. Just it's very time consuming to actually get them if you've not done all the previous requirements. And they last for four hours of combat. That is constant combat though, however, so four hours is quite a substantial amount of time, but you've got to think once you've then, once they've degraded, you then got to do 20, 25 minutes of Dominion Tower again. So you're going to be doing a lot of Dominion Tower overall throughout your PVM career. So I hope you enjoyed this video anyway, and I'm going to be showing some footage in the future around me PVMing with the Spellcaster gloves, gloves, so you'll see them in action as at the 9th of November 2014. If they do get patched or nerfed in any way, whatever the changes are going to be, when I get back from holiday, I'm going to Morocco on Friday guys by the way, and when I get back from holiday on the 24th of November, if they have been nerfed in any time over the next two weeks, I will look at making a video on the patched version in a couple of weeks time, just to give you guys a bit of confidence there, just in case they are changed. 
Thanks again as always for watching, good luck on your PVM trips and happy scaping.